Awesome, man. Is that That's what cool. you wanted? Is that kind of what Perfect. you were yeah, looking we're, for? We're going to splice that down into like little tidbits that we'll put out. I'll send you it when it's all edited up. You know, tell me if you're, you're okay with me putting it out. And you've done this in what, three years? You've gotten to where you are? Two. Uh, well, I've been doing it for like 10 years, but like on my own since 2020. You know, it's absolutely amazing. Like everybody was making a good living, but you wanted to take it to the next level. You probably saw operators doing well. You took a huge, huge risk. And in such a short period of time, look at where you've become. That's the beautiful thing about real estate. And I love being around guys like you and uh, and others that are like true entrepreneurs. Because like we all have this really like deep, deep-seated deep belief. And it's my belief too. That no matter what happens in the market, I'll figure it out. But I will tell you, your guy that I'm looking at, he's mm -hmm. going to get his number. So his profit margin is going to be there no matter what happens. Because he's going to get something. You're going to help him. I'm willing to pay a number. I've got money. He's got product. I don't see that changing. I, I see it getting more challenging. I don't see necessarily those portfolios going down. I see it maybe becoming tougher and tougher to sell, but you only need one buyer, right? You could sell that, but many people underwrite from their desk and then they come out and see it and they crunch the numbers and all of a sudden they're going to want to retrade. A hypothetical sale at a larger number is hypothetical. It's not going to yeah. happen. So yeah. you don't want to have to stub your toe, buyer, uh, uh, agent, or seller. And so I always look at a guaranteed thing. If somebody's more solid, if they have cash, anybody paying cash, whether it's cars, Rolexes, houses, whatever, I'm always going to look at that person more serious. And I'm always willing to sell something I have uh, uh, for less money because I know they're going to close. And a guaranteed execution, I believe, is what you want to look at in this market. But someone that can do a guaranteed execution, someone with cash, I'm not paying retail. I suppose the only way a seller can really mitigate, you know, being retraded in a transaction and not getting what they thought they were getting are the, the, the contract points. You know, a lot of sellers are creating contracts right now that put them on the hook for price, material price increases, labor price increases to a certain amount. And then the, the responsibility falls on the, on the buyer, you know, after a certain amount. And like, you know, I, I guess if you, if you underwrite the buyer to make sure that they have the number, they have the money, and, and, you, and you have the right contract points that say, all right, if, if X happens, here's the, my risk, here's your risk. If Z happens, here's my risk, here's your risk. Right. You know, to my mind, it's all about writing a contract that makes sense for you. Yeah, and, and you have to know your seller or buyer, depending on which side you're on. Yeah. You need to know their capital. You need to know where the capital is coming from. If I put it under contract, then I have to run around Wall Street trying to raise the money. Yeah. That's a riskier buyer. If I have it in the yeah. bank, you know I have it. I'm going to pay cash with some debt. I show you my debt facility. I show you my cash. You know I've got that today. I'm not running around looking at it. So you have to know, is your buyer in a financial position when they make the offer to execute? Or they run around scrambling around trying to get the money right. and then execute. And they're going to tie you up uh, for a longer period of time, want extensions, want to retrade you. Whereas yeah. if I negotiated a good deal, it's mm -hmm. fair. I'm not going to retrade. Why would I? And I yeah. have to place capital, but I'm not forced to pay capital. And also, I can earn a little bit less on my money because I have no board of directors. I have no investors. I have to hit waterfalls and, and all these different things. So I can be negatively affected based on the cost of money, mm -hmm. but that doesn't mean I can pay more money or over the price. Something's got to give. So I, I think sellers and buyers have to realize you're in a, a kind of uncharted waters in a, a difficult time. And to get a deal done, I think there's got to be more flexibility on both of them but the, the, the higher the cost of that debt goes, it's going to negatively affect the seller more than the buyer because that's right. just going to be a pass through. The buyer will want a discount dollar for dollar mm -hmm. and the seller has to understand they need to give it if they want to sell the portfolio. Now, they might have to pull the portfolio off mm -hmm. uh, the market, but if you put it back on in six months or a year, how do you know it's worth more? It right. may be worth less. Well, the, or, 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 or the real estate or the real estate could be worth more on paper because real estate values have shot up. But like the pool of buyers that could actually buy your rental properties is, is relatively finite, you know, and then those people can't make a good offer. Then the price actually goes down. Oh, as well. You hit the nail on the head. These pricing models and what people are looking to do are based on apartment financing. It's mm -hmm. based on a lower cap, 
It's based on higher expenses. When I was in the apartment business, I ran up not so great, a large apartment complex at about a 49% uh, expense ratio. Yep. Good operators between 40 and 45, as you know, you can be at 28 or 30, right? And so one of the reasons the multifamily guys are coming into our business is the expense ratio is much, much lower. But yep. when a when a uh, appraiser is looking at your portfolio, your subdivision, they're going to base it on an apartment type uh, expense ratio. And the buyer or the, the seller needs to understand what the retail value that you're seeing on the MLS absolutely means nothing uh, when you're trying to sell your portfolio. I, I, t I tend to think like I have a little different opinion. I, I don't I think retail value does mean something because if you look at the retail value and you can look at what and you look at what you can get for your properties as an investment, you might be able to get less for your properties as an investment because the cap rates just aren't high enough, in which case it puts you to a decision. Does it make more sense to sell your properties retail one off? Well, that's kind of the reason why this asset class is so attractive is because if, you, if your house is worth 400 retail, but like the most investors will pay for it is 360, and like you calculate that, you calculate the pain in the ass factor of selling 50 or 60 or 70 houses, it might be worth it for you to take that hit in terms of like time, energy, hassle, and also all the friction costs. It also swings the other way. If your house is only worth 360 retail, but you know the cap rate's so good that an investor might pay 380, 390, 400, by, by the virtue of the institutional investor or the, 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 uh, the professional investor being able to pay 400, it makes your house worth 400 because now you have a comp. I mean, we do crazy things. We'll put in a nice fence at a house. They used to be 3,000, let's call it, say, four or 5,000 now. Right. The tenant pays for half of it from day one. We then charge them $100 more a month for rent. Mm -hmm. Our fence is paid for in a couple years. When we go to sell that house, we're getting roughly $10,000 for a $3,000 fence. The tenant paid for it. My, yeah. um, my income I'm getting that, on that house is $100 more a mm -hmm. month but I'm getting it from a $3,000 fence. So right. we're making seven grand to put up a fence and someone else is paying for it. But again, does that fence make the property worth more? Does a, does a $1,800 uh, fireplace make, not, not inherently, but people are buying the cap rate. So I agree with you and I disagree with you because different funds will not go over retail. Other mm -hmm. funds, they don't care. They'll pay based on the coupon or the yield. And mm -hmm. many look at both, but at the end of the day, I think the sellers can be pickier, right? I, I think right now the sellers can can be pickier. However, what are they going to do with that money? I got to jump for my next uh, my next call, though. I appreciate all this, man. If I were you out there in TV land, I would hire Adam. Adam will get you more money for your assets. Adam's the guy to call. Think of Strata and think of Adam Stern. Thank you, Adam. You have a nice day.